I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got a video that's uh, something of a follow-up to one that we did uh, maybe two weeks ago. In that video, we talked about the lifespan of a 16-inch gun barrel and how the Navy extended that over the ship's career. Now, in that video, we touched on the concept of equivalent service rounds, or ESRs, and how that is the number that's used to calculate the life of the barrel. Um, and, and we briefly described it, but in this video, we're gonna talk more about ESR and uh, just how many shots that actually is. Uh, so an equivalent service round takes the, let's call it the most destructive normal round that a barrel will fire. So for an Iowa-class battleship, that is the armor-piercing projectile. That is the heaviest thing that we're pushing down that barrel. Uh, so it is causing the most wear uh, to that barrel. And uh, usually we say that the barrel was designed to be good for about 300 shots. But smaller, lighter projectiles, like the high capacity here, and uh, projectiles that are fired with less propellant will cause less wear and tear to the barrel, so they will last longer. There are three things that affect the barrel life. One is thermal stress. The propellant igniting creates heat, and that heat is absorbed by the metal of the barrel, and it can only absorb so much heat uh, before it takes damage. Two is chemical erosion. The propellant burning uh, is releasing a gaseous byproduct, and that uh, is blowing against the metal of the barrel, and that is eroding it over time. And then three is mechanical fatigue. The projectile itself is pushing its way through the barrel, and because it's a rifled barrel, there is very direct contact from the brass base ring of the shell to the rifling of the barrel, and so that is wearing out the barrel over time. So in the last video, we talked about how the Navy adds a series of uh, products. Uh, in the 1960s, they add something called Swedish additive, which is a titanium dioxide packet. It's just a couple of pounds of this stuff, um, which is also impregnated in wax, which is usually in like a lead packet. That's put between the first and second powder bag. And when the powder detonates, it disperses the contents of that packet, and that helps reduce the chemical and thermal stresses on the barrel. In the 1980s, they add a polyurethane sleeve around the powder bags, which also atomizes during the uh, firing process and helps coat the inside of the barrel. It will also help reduce thermal and chemical wear. So uh, at the end of the day, the, the thing you can't reduce becomes the thing that dictates the life of the barrel, and that is the mechanical wear, which fortunately is the part of the process that is doing the least wear to the steel barrel. So the Navy said that by the 1980s, the lifespan of the guns was functionally infinite. It wasn't infinite, the guns would burn out eventually, but it is functionally infinite because the amount of time it would take the ship to fire that many shots exceeds the projected life of the ship. So let's actually look at some of these numbers. During World War II, the Navy estimated that these brand new barrels that they just developed, which are high caliber and they're firing a really high weight armor piercing shell, could last approximately 290 armor piercing shells. Uh, specifically, an armor piercing shell traveling at about 2,500 feet per second, which is how fast it could get with a new barrel. As the barrel wears out some, that speed reduces some. And so about 2,450 was kind of the average for an armor-piercing shell's velocity. Since that is the most destructive thing we're pushing through the barrel, that is one equivalent service round. A World War II era armor-piercing shell with a full charge at full velocity without Swedish additive or the polyurethane sleeve. The 1,900-pound projectile uh, shoots with a muzzle velocity of about 2,700 feet per second with a new barrel. 
because it is a lighter projectile, even though it's going a little bit faster, which normally causes more wear, but because it's significantly lighter, about 800 pounds less, it only counts as 0.43 equivalent service lives. Uh, so essentially, you can fire two and a half of the high capacity shells before it counts as much as one of the armor piercing shells. Now, in addition to the live ammunition that we fire, there was also training ammunition. And training ammunition is usually fired with half of the powder charge. There are specific powder bags that are half of the size of a regular one, and they are firing with less powder. And so that powder, it's less gas, it's less pressure, it's uh, less of all the stress factors, uh, so it's going to do less. So for example, the 1900 pound reduced charge travels at 1900 feet per second. So that is only 0 0.03 equivalent service rounds. So essentially, uh, you can fire these things off in training all day long, and because you're using half charges, uh, you're not going to reduce the barrel nearly as much. People always ask, oh my god, if it's only 300 rounds or 290 rounds in World War II before you have to change the barrel, how did they ever do any training? And the answer is reduced charges. The 2,700 pound practice round uh, travels with a muzzle velocity of about 1,800 feet per second, uh, and that is 0 0.08 of an equivalent service round. So it takes uh, something like 12 of these in training to equal one armor-piercing shell traveling down the barrel. During the Korean War, the Navy was able to look at their reports, and they sort of decided that, you know, that 290 equivalent service life that they'd come up with for these barrels through some mathematical process when they were designing it, uh, they, they decided that number was just a little bit low, and so they revised that number to about 350 rounds. That said, Following the Korean War, the Navy still chooses to swap out the barrels on the Iowa-class battleships, even though they only had uh, in the high 200s of shots through them. The fear was, if we got into another war, these barrels might only have 60, 70, 80 rounds left in them, which is maybe one engagement, and then even if they go through that engagement or that shore bombardment, um, that campaign, without taking any major damage, they still have to come back to port for a long period of time to swap out their barrels. So in the mid-1950s, around 1954 for Battleship New Jersey, uh, the Iowa-class battleships come back, swap out their barrels for spares that we had laying around from Illinois, Kentucky, the first Montanas, um, and then go back out. And it's just easier to do that in peacetime. That is the only time that the Iowa-class had their barrels changed out because they had fired a certain number of equivalent service rounds. In Vietnam, like we talked about, they add the uh, Swedish additive, which means that firing an armor-piercing shell, 2,700 pounds, 2,500 feet per second, uh, that now becomes 0.26 equivalent service rounds. So essentially, Swedish additive, just a couple of pounds of that titanium dioxide and wax in lead foil, now means that you can fire four of these Whereas during World War II, you could only fire one. So that is incredible. We've increased the life of the gun to about 1,200 rounds, which is just about a fourfold increase over when the gun was first manufactured. You get even more use out of your gun firing the high capacity shell. This is a 1,900 pound projectile traveling at 2,700 feet per second, and it is now 0.11 equivalent service rounds uh, for firing one of these. So again, you can fire 10 of these where you were only firing one armor-piercing round before. During this time period, there's a misfire, and uh, it seems like Captain Snyder, who was himself uh, something of a gunnery expert, uh, nixed using reduced service charges with these guns. Uh, so we've only got numbers for the full 660 pound full velocity firings of these guns. But keep in mind, reducing the charge to half reduces the wear of the gun by, by something like a factor of 12. And that's on top of the savings you've already gotten from adding the Swedish additive.
And in the 1980s, when they add that polyurethane sleeve, they just stop calculating the uh, equivalent service lives of these projectiles because that polyurethane sleeve has now reduced the chemical and thermal wear on the barrel to the point that the only thing you have to measure now is the fatigue equivalent rounds or the mechanical wear of a shell passing down the barrel, uh, which has always been about 1,500 armor-piercing shells per barrel. Keep in mind, during Vietnam, they'd gotten it down to about 1,200 shells per gun with just the uh, Swedish additive. Now, so at what point uh, is the barrel worn out enough that you no longer uh, can use it? The, the usual measurement in artillery would be when you're firing a projectile and your uh, spread of the shells is 10% greater than it's designed to be. Uh, so that means that you've worn away enough of the rifling that the projectiles are not leaving the gun as straight as they should be, and they're about 10% wider dispersion. As designed, the Iowa class are supposed to fire a nine gun salvo within 1.9% of the range of the projectile they're firing. So they're designed for a maximum range of about 42,000 yards. That's 21 nautical miles. Uh, and that ends up being a dispersion of about 800 yards. A 10% increase on that comes to 2.09%, which again, at 42,000 yards, uh, ends up being about 875 yards, 880 yards uh, for the dispersion of your guns. So you add an extra 80 yards onto the, the area where your shells are dropping, and the Navy says, ah, that's too much. And again, that's after hundreds of rounds being fired through these barrels. So what do you think? Is that more shells than you think that the, these battleships are able to fire from their guns? Everybody always talks about about 300 rounds, but that feels like such a low number. You would think that they would shoot that up in a single engagement, which they, they don't. That's a large number of shells. You don't even shoot that up in an entire campaign. But do you think those numbers are, are kind of low or kind of high? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.